you're listening to Home Bodies Only, where we welcome all, bo- all bodies excuse me, to join us as we break down and dissect HBO series. And this episode, we are talking about the season, first season finale of Euphoria and Salt the Earth Behind You. Now, I did not find a song with this title. It was driving me nuts. Because obviously, no. It's a line from a song, right? Well, I couldn't find it. I found I was going crazy. It's clearly a line from a song, a poem, something, because the way they went back and forth, Rue and Jules, right? About Rue was like, I effing hate this town. And then Jules says, let's burn it to the effing ground. And then Rue says, and salt the earth behind Mm -hmm. you. Do you know what and salt the earth behind you means? (laughs) I don't know. I didn't know what it meant. Do you know what that I saying means? I have no means? idea. It means I like- I feel like I should know what that means. It means like- And just like leave leave uh, like a trail, like leave a like leave a, a and destroy. Behind you. Yes, <laughs> yes. Leave and destroy everything right? behind you. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> so I was like, salt of the earth. That's every time I'd look at the um, title, I kept thinking mm. salt of the earth, which is not totally different. It's totally different. So anyway, I found mm-hmm. an album called Salt, the Earth Behind You by Laura- <laughs> Harlow, I found another, hmm. looks like another album by Tom from Hell. <laughs> I don't know. I was so annoyed um, Great. that I couldn't find. And then I was even looking up, trying to find poems that maybe had those lines. I couldn't find anything. Oh, and just wanted to let everybody know Sean Martini, the guy who was in the one episode who played Mina. We were like, oh, he hasn't done a lot of acting. And I said, I know he's an artist and Post Malone follows him. Well, Machine Gun Kelly like wears his clothes that he designs. Oh. So he's doing fine. You know, he's um, – someone else was wearing him. Like he's – but he's like underrated. Well, it's kind of cool. He's almost like below – or not underrated, but like below the radar or off the – what's the word? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yes. Yeah. I didn't know if you were there for a second. Um He's, which is kind of cool. Oh, dear. You know. Yeah. I, I can't see Diane again. She switched computers because her yeah, sound was weird. But this computer is – a D on – She's screen. a D. Yeah. Yeah. Big D Not energy. A bag. I, Big like D. I'm, <laughs> no, you – I need a new computer. If anybody – this is probably a good time of year to buy a computer because – It is. You know, well, we're back to school. This in July and uh, – yeah, so any recommendations? I need a new computer. A laptop, MacBook actually, but. Air? That's what you should have. I don't know what's wrong with Ooh. you? That's what I have. I should. Yeah, I, I can't believe you don't a have MacBook your own computer. Air? Yeah. I feel like your children I, have better technology than you. They what? do. Yeah. I should be recording this in my son's bedroom right now. He has like a legit like high-end PC with a t- – why didn't I – he's not even home. I could be using the studio. I thought of that. I'm like, could she borrow like his <laughs> – computer maybe yeah but you need your own yeah for many reasons because we are podcasters and um you need to have a computer your own computer like i have like this giant hp laptop that is such a dinosaur it weighs 700 pounds it's not the one i'm using right now but um it takes about 45 minutes to fire up i mean it is if you're (laughs) waiting for the dial up to kick in like we just haven't bought a new we have a chromebook here you know from the pandemic here um when we remote we have a couple chromebooks to get us through but what are those like junk 250 bucks or 340 i don't know and it's funny because anyway there are pieces of junk after about six months (laughs) our recording uh, riverside fm who we were we used to record recommends like First of all, we have to do it through Chrome, which I don't mind, but like it sounds like Chromebook would be perfect, but it, then you're having all the issues. I used to have some issues though too with my whatever. But yes, you need to get a computer. You need to invest. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. All right. Let's kick this off. Rue yeah, is I'm on that. <laughs> I'm digging okay. it. Okay. Okay. Rue, right. Rue is in the hospital for a kidney infection. I just wrote ill. Um I thought maybe at the end of the last episode when she was in the bathtub, right, with her mom. I was like, oh, she's going to be okay. Like, I kept thinking she was going to end up with some kind of bad infection. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, she's all right. And then, no, she's in the hospital. And then this whole part, trying to talk the doctor into giving her Roxaset. And I was like, don't – I was like, that would never happen. They know she's an addict. And I no. was glad at least that was realistic right. that the doctor comes in and is like, um, you yeah, know, I think they just said Tylenol. Um, she's like, can I have the Vicodin? Um <laughs> 
She likes the hospital. Yeah, right. <laughs> I backtrack. Yeah. She likes the hospital. Oh, my gosh. She, <laughs> she makes it like a dream. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I could relate to her. Like, you remember when we were in the hospital after having a ba- or baby, yeah. you don't want to leave. You're like, no, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. I, I no, cried when no. we had to leave. Yeah, I – I didn't cry, but I was like, <laughs> I don't want to go. Like, I loved the nurse who was on the last, like, day or so that was there. She was so sweet. And she held him. And oh, anyway, I just remember being like, <laughs> I did start to cry. I know I did cry. And she was like, oh. And she teared up, too. And she was like, oh, don't be like that. Or something. It's like, they serve you food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I ha- don't have to think. Oh. And the food was they'll good take, at our birth center. Yes. And they'll take the baby for you. And meanwhile, I didn't even know how good that was until – because he was my one and only. Mm. But damn, never had that again. Never. <laughs> Not me. Not when I and got And I was there for five days. Oh, my God. For each, at least five – like the insurance – because I had two C-sections. And right. they covered the extra day, our insurance or something. So mm. they were like, if you – want to stay i was like yes please yeah. can i stay another night <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. no nah. i know most people like get me I'll out of the hospital steak and the right. bottle of wine that you Food's gave me so last good. night yeah oh my god <laughs> yeah good. they used to give yeah. champagne i do miss it they did a um celebratory dinner with the parents and they gave you a bottle of champagne but by the time when i went they actually stopped doing that because i think people were stealing it from the kitchen <laughs> the people yeah, who from work the kitchen, there the, yeah. the workers yeah I mean, yeah. come on. Um, but my mom ended up give, bringing me a little – I think she brought me like a the split mini, yeah. a Prosecco so did, or something. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I think my sister brought me a, a, like a split. Um, but we did get a wine. They wouldn't give us champagne. but Really? I feel like they gave us a small bottle of red wine or something. Maybe they but changed they, it Yeah. Again. With the first one. I don't think the second one. I think you're right. Oh. I think for- times changed because they were stealing and, you know, the champagne. That stinks. All right. Times are yeah, listen when you work working at the hospital, man. You need a yeah. And this is pre COVID cocktail apparently. At the end of the day, <laughs> this is way pre COVID. Yeah, way pre COVID. Kids are ten and five. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, okay, went off on that. So Jules comes to okay. visit her, and at Those first I'm like, days. yeah. First I'm like, oh, mm. I was like, she has like black roots. I'm like, no, she dyed them. Like then later in the episode, you could tell she dyed like a strip around her face and I looked up and I mean it could have been it could have been a hair piece I, I don't really know but I did look her up to see what color her hair is she's not she's not a natural platinum blonde she's like a darker blonde but she does look like a natural blonde she's so fair and everything anyway I was just stuck on that of course mm-hmm. um apparently there's a dance coming right there's a dance and Jules dresses Rue up very girly not very girly though, because she's not. It's not like she's wearing a fairy dress or something. Girly. But but Makeup girly. She looked. She looked beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, Jules tells her about Anna, and then she's talking about Anna bit her, and she liked it, and mm-hmm. she's like, "I'll do it to you." And she like <clears throat> bites her neck, and Rue's like, "No." Um, Rue's so cute. I love this part. Oh, and she's she wants um, Jules wants Rue to meet those friends. Then Rue fantasizes about setting Nate on fire. Yeah, <laughs> on fire was, yeah. and shooting him. Mm. Then the rhythm of the mm-hmm. night starts playing. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was so great. I, listen, the, the music, beat of the rhythm once again, of the night. They, yeah. Yeah. Do you remember DeBarge? Uh yeah. Of course. Right? No, that I was, was the psyched. jam. And I was, he was married to um Janet Jackson. Wait, Janet for a Jackson hot second. for a minute. It wasn't yeah, a great yeah. marriage, apparently. <laughs> I think he was physical with her. Yeah, um, Debar- dude, that is still the jam when that comes on oh in the, the car. Like I'm still <laughs> jamming out to Debarge, even Ooh. though he's kind of a, not a good no. team catch. But um, well, neither is a lot he's of like other a drug musicians. addict, I think, or something, or mm-hmm. was, or what? I don't know what the deal. He's older now. You is know, he alive? I don't know. I don't know. The musicians living down at the Del Boca Vista retirement. Yeah. <laughs> some of the <laughs> some of the best music comes from really messed up people. You know, that's. That's artists for you. Right? Really messed up people. I mean, yeah. That, I, yeah. Yeah. That I knew song, you would and then love there that. There was one other one. Didn't they do a, um, what was the other one? Um, like an old one, you mean? At the end, at the end, they played a song. Ugh, I can think of the Michael Bublé version. Who did the original version of that song? Uh, I don't uh, know what song it was. And I'm saying, I didn't write that down. To you. 
I've acted out my life in, or, oh, what is that song? You know what I'm talking about. No, I can't. I wish I wrote it down. Oh, man. It'll come to me. Anyway, I there was another song. Google it. Like, again, <laughs> that's one of the things. This episode was hard for me to watch, but the music I, I, in the, the series yeah. has been like my saving grace. Yeah. That's all. I thought. This was a hard episode to watch. Really? For you? For I me. thought this was a. A couple times I wanted I to just great. be like, can I just stop watching right now? No. Especially when we get into the Cassie at the appointment. And, and oh, I knew. There, yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Leslie. Like, oh, here we go. It's like, um, what was the show we watched? Scenes from a Marriage. Scenes from um, a Marriage? Secret Lives of Marriages or. Se- yeah, can scenes. you hear me? I keep. I said Scenes from a Marriage three times and you didn't respond. I hope you can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. I- I mean, You're yelling there, at me now. No, it's okay. okay. There, there might be a delay on your end with from me or something. I'm not sure. Great. Anyway, it's okay. Um, Leslie, Rue's mom, is narrating a lot of the parts. I think mostly when they show Rue, right? Um, it's with a letter that she was asked to write when Rue was in rehab and what the addiction had cost their family. And I, will, I didn't write details down yeah. about that. What, so when Rue and Jules come down the stairs to go to the dance, Leslie and I don't know what Jules' dad's name is, but are having a glass of wine while they're waiting. And I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. my God, couple, like new couple alert? What's going to happen with that? You think, <laughs> right? Did you feel the chemistry? <laughs> or no? But then, but then if they're a thing and they're, mm. who cares? <laughs> be problematic no why yeah whatever who cares okay um leslie needs some some joy okay that's all i'm saying uh all right i have cassie no no wasn't that but wasn't that jules's that was jules's dad though right that's what i said what are you talking about yeah that's what i mean it would be problematic down the road if the two parents were who cares canoodling no who cares you know that's what i'm saying just mean because jules and I know. <laughs> I said, who cares? Let Leslie put herself first. Jesus Christ. She deserves yes. it. Yes, I agree. Yes. <laughs> it's exactly. not real people, Diana. Diana, <laughs> they're not real people. <laughs> I'm like, oh, if they get married, oh my God. Sisters, I mean, but then they were, what are we going to oh do God. about this? Jeez. Oh my God. And then if they're at the wedding and the two aren't, you know, together anymore, I don't know. What if, or what if the parents break up and it stresses everybody out? Okay. Um, Cassie. Okay, I'm going through all the, the outfits, I guess. Ca- Cassie mm-hmm. is barely made up. She's very subdued. She does look down. Da- you know, she looks depressed down or whatever. Mom tells her, keep her head ho- held high, you know. And it's similar to what Cal had been saying to Nate. I just thought that was interesting. Um, Lexi looks adorable. Yeah. Then we see Kat, and she's dressed in a red dominatrix dress <laughs> that looks – I'm going to be not so nice. looks very cheap, to <laughs> be honest. like, you look beautiful. I know. I'm like, what? I mean, hey, yeah. teach his own. You want to wear that. I just feel like she could have gotten a better quality dress. It did look cheap and plasticky to me. I feel like she could have gotten – you know, she's getting paid nicely for her side hustle, and I think she yeah, could have gotten been real leather. leather. That was definitely pleather. That's what I thought. Mm-hmm. I looked up – oh, and she starts like kind of having – she was like panicking. You could tell having like a panic attack and she said it was asthma or whatever. Um, I did look up who played her mom because I was like, eh, who's this lady? Because she – and if you looked at her eyes, her eyes did she remind me of J-Lo. Well, I looked her up. Her name's Mercedes Calon. Um, she was in JAG. I never watched that. She said known for Malignant uh, 2021, Route 66. No, I'm sorry, Route 666. So that must be a scary movie. 2001 and then Jag. Um, mm. I don't know. Mm. She has that face though that she, I wonder if she's done like commercials. I don't know. She just, I remember seeing like previews for Jag and stuff. like. I never really watched it though, I don't think. But anyway, she did look familiar. Mm-hmm. I just thought I'd look her up. She doesn't have an Instagram account because of course I would have stalked her and <laughs> tagged her. Okay. Stalked her. Yeah. Tag, tag, tag. We see Nate. Nate is wearing a suit and he's going to the dance with some blonde chick that we don't know who she is. We do find out later she's a cheerleader. That's basically, I have no clue what her name is. Um, okay. Maddie, I did like Maddie's outfit. So I found you it. Did? Yes, I did. If you had a daughter, would you let her wear that to a dance? Yep. Because guess what? The people in a real high school would not allow that. Yes, to they come would. into a high school. Have you seen? 
Are you kidding me? Have you seen no. prom dresses lately, girl? Have you? Sometimes. They're... I thought they had a dress code. I... Have you seen? You know what I've seen? <laughs> Have you seen? Okay, what's wrong with her dress? It's sheer. Well, yeah. Okay. That was a little too sheer, I guess, to see your <laughs> underwear. But you got, honey, there's a movement here. No slut shaming. <laughs> no body shaming. Okay. Um, no, no. Right. This dress is super, or it's actually, it looks like a two-piece. I thought it was pants, but it looks like it is a skirt. It was like, it's like $625. It's Acna Black Crystal Gown, they're calling it. I just like the whole look. I liked mm. the sheer with the crystal net netting over her face veil i'm sorry over her face i just i did like it she does tend to go for the same styles um but i did like it i mean if it i i, I wouldn't wear it if I, if I wore that i would definitely wear something underneath i don't you know i think it's sexy when you can't see everything but i mm-hmm. don't i'll tell you there's some i've seen pictures i'm not saying eh. i've seen recently pictures that were not prom were not like junior or senior or whatever younger kids wearing the shortest ASS dresses that I'm like, what? I, I, when it's that short and when your whole private whatever is going to come out, I, I don't, I don't find that attractive, but that's me anyway. So no, no, I don't really think there's a dress code. Not in today's people. Oh, I thought no. that they couldn't wear stuff. Well, are you, they, it's becoming more, well, one there's thing more I resistance would say I think, is to the that. music. There and was, the music yeah. would not be – I mean, they were saying, like, some bombs <laughs> at that dance. And there's no way on earth that they would allow that playlist to be, like, jamming <laughs> out in the gym or wherever this was. I'm sorry. Like, it was, like, full-on club headbangers. This like, is euphoria, Diana. The language. Um, and they were, like, throwing <laughs> up, stuff. like um, – I know. Again, not real people, not real <laughs> – Diana gets very <laughs> emotionally involved. I think that's the problem. Like that's why you there's yeah. certain show it's like you get too Where emotionally were the chaperones? involved. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, they weren't dear. there. There were none. Because these they kids weren't. are there was way no too chaperones. old. Yeah. It was just a bunch yeah. And they're all <laughs> drinking and doing drugs yes. and nobody's oh, yeah. it's fantastic. Watch. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, in the hallways, they're vaping, like, just, in oh, the I know. stalls, like, yeah. they're just, you know, the, it's a free-for-all. It's like a bathroom. At this the point. bathroom was very busy. <laughs> um, okay, so we have Dude. Cassie, Lexi, and Maddie riding together, and they're drinking Gatorade with Everclear, and Everclear is, like, a very strong, I just have to see the proof again, or whatever it is, very strong alcohol. <gasps> Wait a minute. It's made from grain. Ew. Yep. It's bottled. It's grain alcohol, Everclear. It's like bubbing bo- alcohol, basically. Basically, it's at six. Oh shoot! I just went to the different sixty percent, seventy five point five percent, ninety four point five percent, and ninety five percent. So it's one hundred twenty. These are your choices: one hundred twenty proof, one fifty one, one eighty nine, and one ninety. Now I've had rum that was one fifty one proof. Oh my god! Why am I forgetting the name of that drink? <laughs> That's why I'm forgetting the name of the drink. <laughs> What were they called? Rock, rocket fuel. Yeah, they right. were called rocket fuel. They were like pina coladas. That's not even like. What? <laughs> what now? That's not even enjoyable. Like what is the. It yeah. is when you have one. <laughs> one. <laughs> this was a drink I had when I had my time, time share. My, <laughs> it sounds so fancy. I really didn't have a lot of money. Um, on Fire Island. <laughs> And we would have rocket fuel. Oh, and excuse me. Is that when you got your tattoo too? You rock No, star? I had my tattoo before that because I was in college when I got the tattoo. <laughs> okay. No. I No, I got like a quarter share. I remember like either had a half or there was like maybe one. Maybe, no, I don't think I ever could afford a full share in the house. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. I so mean, we, we had some, that. So we, we could have had a vacation. No, it wasn't like that. Literally renting. Literally every summer, mm-hmm. someone, they called it a share, but it, we, we rented a house. Someone, you know, one of our friends ran it and like tried to get a group together, said, Hey, I'm going to rent this house. Who wants a share? Like who wants to be able to come out? So if you had like a half share, you could come out every other weekend. You had a quarter, you were supposed to come out once a week, once a month. But I just remember coming out way more than I was probably supposed to. I don't remember <laughs> than your but, shares. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, 
I could go into I did like a whole section on the dance, like all the stuff that happens at the dance. And then I have a section on Fez. Should I wait for Fez or should we go into Fez is not that long, but there's a whole part. He wasn't at the dance. He had nothing to do with the dance. Okay. Fez. He's getting his gun. He's wearing like this black hoodie or, or hoodie or whatever. And he's covering himself up and he's saying, love you to his grandma. And he's watching the house where mouse. So he watches mouse come out of mouse, come out of his house. (laughs) I think it was Mouse's house. Oh, my God. I don't want to say that 50 times. Okay. Um, then he follows Mouse <laughs> to another house. And he sees him, like, talking to the guy or whatever. <laughs> so, you know what? I've wa- I watched this episode twice. The first time, yes, I was drinking vodka and seltzer. This second time I watched it, I was like, oh. I did not realize <laughs> Fez robs the guy where Mouse just was. Now, I'm trying to figure Correct. out. This I caught that guy. I, I had to rewind it because of the cer- the certificate that was on the wall. I wanted yes. to read it because then I was like, wait, wait, what? Oh, oh okay. Because Fez says, you're yeah. a doctor. But so here's my question, and I probably should have Googled it because you can find out anything about these shows usually. Um was this guy like Mouse's boss, like or Mouse some like higher than Mouse because he had all that money? The doctor guy, right? He had all that cash, so I would think he is above Mouse. Like, was Mouse paying him? You know what I mean? What do you think? Yeah. So that's he's what I'm okay. Okay. So he's like the kingpin, or whatever you want to call him. Maybe. Basically, he's a doctor, but like he's a. Drug dealing dealing. doctor. But he's like like, like, not like scary looking. So he has the scary guys under him. I don't know. So I did. Yeah, this part was terrible because he robs the guy (sighs) when I I know. First of all, why didn't the guy say anything to the kid? Or maybe I don't know. So Fez sees the kid, gets distracted Mm -hmm. for like what a second. So the doctor goes and reaches for his gun. And Fez just goes off. Like Fez went off way too hard i feel like and to like did he kill him yeah. i don't you know i would think so that was terrible i hate that part then he gets a text that mouse is from ashtray that mouse is there so he goes home he pays mouse i was glad to see mouse again um and there's blood on the money and the little <laughs> sidekick guy there he's not little but the guy the sidekick was like looks at fez um yeah Woo! Yo, Fez. Okay. At the dance. So Cassie says the first time she's it's, she's in high school that she's not in love with anyone. Oh, before they get to the dance, Nate is in his truck with that girl. Ugh, she puts her feet on the dashboard with the shoes on. He's like, no shoes on the, da- on the dash. And then so she takes her shoes off and puts her feet up mm-hmm. there. I'm like, oh, whatever. Um, what's the point? Yeah. So Cassie so brings up, you know, how her mom always talks about how high school was a, such a big monumental part of her life. And Maddie says that's because most people peaked in high school and they're all saying like how they haven't peaked yet. And I just sort of so sad. And I was like, I'm definitely still peaking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 47. Right. I'm still peaking. I haven't peaked yet. This yeah. ain't the last you see. That's right. <laughs> There's no peaking in yeah. high school, no. you think. Yeah. And then, heck no. Mm-mm. I When I was in high it's funny because let me think. There was something somebody said. So Cassie. Oh. Oh, Kat. Uh, yeah, Kat says she hasn't peaked yet. So Cassie says maybe people are nostalgic about high school because it was the last time they got to dream. And I say, biatch, I'm still dreaming. Um, Jewel. <laughs> Jules gets a. Get that vision board going, girl. That's right. I, I am. You need to, too. because. You know, I can't be the only one. Come on. Um, Jewel, no, where are we? Jules gets a picture sent to her from Anna. She's all excited. Like, that's happening, like, under the table. She's texting. Jules feels the opposite. She feels like high school is super effing suffocated and suffocating. And I I did like high school. I did enjoy it. You know, it wasn't too terrible for me, I will say. I know that's not, you know. It can be definitely rough, but I did feel like it was suffocating. I remember being like, I can't wait to get out of here. Not that I went very far, 
eventually, I'm not that far from my town, but <laughs> I did get out into the world and, you know, lived in the city and studied abroad and did other, other things. And, you know, I'm still friends with some of my friends from high school, but I knew there was more to life than that. Like I definitely had some former friends that did peak in high school and knew like were like hanging on still as hard as they could. It's like, no, there's better looking people than yeah, you. Yeah, and my sorry. goal was really to, <laughs> once I left, it was like, I'm never moving back. Like, mm-hmm. my sister moved back. You know, she left and she moved back to, to, you know, around town or whatever. And my brother, you know, left. And came, I was, my goal was, as the youngest, I was like, I am never coming back here. I Only to visit. I, was, um, hey, I thought I was never I coming back, too. I never thought I'd come back either. Yeah. yeah, I came back for graduate school and moved in with my parents because I couldn't afford to, and I, I couldn't work and go to. I knew I could not work full time and go to grad school or even work part time because grad school was a lot of work. Holy mackerel! The people who did work at all, I was like, what? Um, so, mm-hmm. but I didn't expect. Like, I did actually look into graduate schools in Florida. Like, I was looking to move somewhere else. Um, but that was the best. It was the best deal, at least for me. And um. I thought maybe I would move away again, like after when I graduated. Um, but, uh, you know, then I met Dave or re met Dave. And he had a business here. So mm-hmm. you have to stay. And then okay. he met me. Yeah. And then I'm like, I'm never leaving. Thank goodness I never went back to Buffalo. Ooh, what were, but yeah, high school. I enjoyed high school, you know. Um, and I think we also didn't go to high school at the Euphoria High School. <laughs> and, we're not going to high school during this time. And I'm, you know, I have friends that have even in my neighborhood that are, their kids are in high school right now. And whew, it is a different, mm-hmm. completely different dynamic than when we went to the school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I went to the school in the late nineties, mm-hmm. you in the early, mm-hmm. um, but just that decade in general was so different oh, yeah. than even the child, what, chi- what they're exposed to now. And I mean, my kid's going to middle school this year and I'm, I'm terrified. Yeah. Our childhoods different were time. different, you know. We were so at. different. And we try so much, at least we do, trying to somewhat preserve that and yeah. sort of have a real, quote unquote, like a more like back in the day child. I, you know, yeah. something just more, you know, what we were. More simple. I don't know. More sheltered. I yeah. Say. More simple. Yeah, I know. More innocent. I know. I more innocent. Ugh. 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 Okay. Um... Jules, oh yeah, she said it was suffocating and then she, I think she said she's at 100, but she wants to get to 150% or something like that. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Um, she goes to the bathroom then to text Anna. So then Nate Nate walks in literally with his hand, like the girl's dress. Ew. Again, super short dress. Again, it's where's lift, the chaperone? Lift it up. <laughs> chaperone. <laughs> First of all, no chaperone's going to tell Nate. Jacob's what to do, probably. Anyway. Well, um, excuse me. And their hand, you know, I don't, you know, I hate to say, I don't so think gross. teachers and, <clears throat> I mean, I know they do like sobriety. I think they do sobriety tests and things like that before they can go to prom. I, I don't know. They, I know there's different schools have different yeah. stuff, but I don't think they can really do much with the clothes stuff, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. yeah. His hands just all over her butt and Maddie. <laughs> Maddie's like, this was funny. first of all, ew. Ew. Second of all, <laughs> ew. Um, ew. <laughs> okay. Then we flash back because apparently they're broken up or whatever. Nate is having some some issues uh, with the two of them. He's having yep. – <laughs> I wrote it very bluntly here and I'm trying to say it cleanly. I mean, he's just having some issues in the bedroom. Um and they mm-hmm. basically get into an argument, and he, that's when he grabs her face, and he's like, what the F's <sighs> wrong with you? And she's like, I'm okay if you're into guys. And I just were like, ay, 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 ay. He walks away. He goes into the bathroom, I think. She spots this book with the DVD in it. Like, mm-hmm. of course, it's right there. Of course, it's right there. Yep. Of course, it's out and not in a drawer <laughs> or anything because, you know, let's just – Whatever. I mean, he would be paranoid. Like, he doesn't want his dad to see it. You know what I mean? Why would – so, yeah. So, she takes it. She's on her way out. She's almost at the front door, and Cal comes out, and he starts talking to her, says, basically, I don't really know you. You know, 
I know you're smart, blah, 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 whatever. He says that what they have is not sustainable and it's really a matter of time before both of them, they take each other down, basically. Tells her to let go of him, break up with him, whatever. She's like, your whole uh, family is so weird. I think she threw in an F-bomb or whatever, which I thought yeah. was funny she said that. Um, Nate Nate has some sort of fun with himself to prove something, I think. That's in the bathroom. Um, yeah. Then there's a football yeah. flashback, and that's when we see the girls, a cheerleader with Maddie. Like, they kept flashing to the football game throughout. Yeah, throughout, and yeah. a lot like putting – there's all this pressure on him to win the game, but really his teammates are the ones like – because he had like they, – they kept saying his passes were like per- perfect or whatever, but they kept like fumbling the ball, right? And then I know I don't have the part at the end. They finally – well, that they finally win the game. I think he scores like the winning touchdown, doesn't he? And then the dad's yeah. like, I know you won, but you still like, but – you weren't in control of your team, like still was on his butt. <laughs> anyway, um, all right. Yeah. So we go back to the dance. Maddie grabs a guy. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. Oh, I this funny. is great. Maddie grabs a guy to dance with. First, The first guy, she's like, do you want to dance? He's like, Ugh. Like, I don't know if he was just stunned she asked him or because she's Nate. She's like, can you dance? I know. She's like, well, yeah. she like <laughs> switches over. He's like, uh-huh. <laughs> um, <excuse me. laughs> I wrote, Maddie grabs a guy to dance with to make Nate's Cheek grabbing ass jealous. <laughs> so it's like he's <laughs> cheek grabbing. Yeah, anyway. Kat says, Oh, I love this part. Kat's like watching them. She's like, They'll probably get married and then divorce like three times and still be happy. <laughs> like, still live a happy life. <laughs> That's funny. That's probably accurate. Yes. Actually. Yeah, it was yeah. great. As sad as that is. Yeah. Um, Rue is looking for jewels in the bathroom. So she. She finds Jules, so they're in like a stall together, and Jules asks Rue why she doesn't kiss her, kiss her. And clearly, you know, Jules wants Rue to be more like Anna, right? It sounds like more aggressive, more take yeah. charge. Um, they dance. They come out, and then they dance, and uh, they give <laughs> – she's giving Nate the finger <laughs> – it like pretends to shoot at him. I just love that part. Rue does that as <clears throat> as the club banger music is like there, jamming. And with there is it okay. Expletives. Oh yeah, there's a song I really like, and I did find the name of it by the way. But that's a little so okay, okay. So cat. Okay, I love this part. I love this part. Cat sees Ethan. Oh, I forgot to mention she's wearing a wig. She's wearing like a wig with longer hair with bangs or whatever. She runs to him, asks him to talk. She apologizes. She goes on about herself and then finally talks about the carnival. Ethan, oh my God, this, I cried. Ethan interrupts. And I said, this one made me cry. He says, one of us is going to hurt her and he'll do his best. It's him. And then they kiss and I, I cried. Know. Did you cry or not? like, oh, it's actually cute. Did you cry? But once again, she's like, when you were flirting with that girl, that I was like, can he just get it? Can you just say to her that that was the friend? I know he doesn't like, can say we just get, But we're past that, obviously. I know. I didn't, they, that annoyed you know, me, though. But it was really – I was like, <clears throat> I needed a tender moment in this show. So yeah, it I, was like a little dose of full house. <laughs> I don't know about that. In the midst of – I don't know about full well, house it was, level it was here. A tender, it was a tenderoni moment. It was, it was cute. <laughs> <laughs> tenderoni. I love that song. Um, I cried. Tenderoni. I really – Yeah, that was – well, I Brown. loved it. I cried both times I saw that part, um, the two times. Mm. So the song that comes on, so then Lexi, this is the best, Lexi's like, bah! like Lexi yell, yell, <laughs> yell something. <laughs> and they start, I don't think they start laughing or something. So I just wait, when they do finally go to the table at one point, Cassie goes, what did you say? She's like, I, so she's like so drunk from the Everclear. She's like, I started to say one thing and then I changed my mind <laughs> That was, that was great. <laughs> so this song "Dangerous" comes on, and, and it was it says Oliver remix. When I looked it up, now I can't picture it in my head at all to like try to sound like it. But it's there's like the synthesizer beat in there, and everybody's dancing. Like Nate is getting like pissed off. He's looking at Maddie. He walks off the dance floor, and like they're all dancing. I don't know this song. I loved this song, and I cannot remember how it goes. And I don't know if you remember this song at all. But it was during this scene. I think Maddie, yeah, she's like <clears throat> really going with the guy. And uh, it was just, I just loved that song. So Rue follows Nate off the dance floor. Then we flash back to Cassie getting the abortion. But that's like, is that all I wrote? Oh, no, they want, that's just one little part, I guess, about her getting the abortion. 
Then we do see Rue with him and she threatens him to leave. She tells him to leave Fez and Jules alone or she will go to the police about Cal. Um, She's like, basically like, I can already ruin my own life. You know, I don't need you to do it. And he insults her. I didn't write this part down, but isn't he like, Mm -hmm. oh, in 10 years, she's not even going to know who you are. Like, I know Jules will be something and blah, blah, blah. And I think she does get hurt by that because he knows how to. Yeah. Even though I wish she just didn't give Mm -hmm. a crap because he's such Mm -hmm. a meanie. He's a meanie. All right. You're a meanie weenie. (laughs) Um, So we flash back to the football game again. This is when I have Nate ends up. I already said this part. So, okay. So after Maddie leaves, Cal comes in his room. That's when he tells him about the game. He talks to him about the game. Okay, this part is crazy. This was really hard to watch. I have some interesting info about it too. Nate goes in his face. Cal pushes him down. Nate is basically trying to fight him. He calls him a Mm F-A-G-G-O-T. Basically, Cal is just trying to keep him down. And I would think like Nate might be stronger than him, but Cal was like, bam. Um, Oh, somebody. Okay. Uh, Nate ends up like sobbing and just banging his head on the floor. Ouch. Okay. So I found an article from Entertainment. I'm not going to – I think it's Entertainment Weekly, right? Um, he talks. He talked about the break – Nate's breakdown, and it was from August 5th, 2019, and it said that he was bleeding. He actually ended up bleeding. Um and there was just a couple mm. things I wanted to – blah, blah, blah. Okay. Like Did when you he get was hurt? Doing, when he was <clears throat> acting out that scene? Yeah. I don't I don't think it was head – I thought it was like his head. Oh, he did get a concussion. Isn't that great? Um, yeah. He said it was physically grueling, but Sam Levinson, the creator, and I have this head nod when there's an intense scene and the stunt guys would kind of lay it out for us. And then when we give each other the head nod, it kind of means that we're just going to go for it when the camera rolls. And Eric, that's – Cal and Eric and I were incredibly close. So I basically said to him, let's rock and roll and make it sort of as real as possible because I think it's super important. And he was on board as well. So Eric (laughs) effing smashed me. I was bleeding. I got a concussion. I ended up throwing up after work. It was, it was gnarly. It said, but it came at the end of my shooting period. I was just wrapping the show around that time. So it was almost like this massive letting go of everything over the eight months that we filmed. It was incredibly grueling, but it was so worthwhile. And I definitely couldn't have done it without Eric and Sam. Blah, blah, blah. Wow. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's all I'm going to, what does he say here? He does. Oh. Anyway. All right. Yeah. So he. It was kind of real, some of the stuff. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Then we see Maddie watch the DVD and her jaw drops. But we don't know who she sees on the DVD, right? Right. We don't know who it is. We don't know if it's Jules. We don't know if it's the latest. Yeah. All right. So then this is the part. Rules says the line that we don't know what it's from. It's going to drive me crazy. The whole thing. I burn to the ground, blah, 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 and salt the earth behind you. Um. Rules asks if Jewel I can't talk. Rue Rules. I called her Rules. Rue asks if Jewel Jules is in love with Anna. Yeah. She says yes. And she says asks in love with her. She says yes. You know, it's sad, but it is realistic, especially around for that age, I feel like. Then Rue asks yeah. if she wishes she were different. And Jules says no. Then Rue says that's when she's like, why don't we just leave? We'll go to the city. Jules is thrilled. Rue kisses her. They leave. They go to Jules' house. And then Rue, Rue starts to have second thoughts, right? Then we go to Natty. Yeah. N- Natty. I can't talk. To- <laughs> <laughs> Nate and Maddie. Natty. Nate tells Maddie to dance with him. I love this part. She's like, you can't dance. <laughs> yeah. He's like, she's like, he's like, it's a slow dance. Um. So Maddie is just saying they shouldn't be together, and Nate just keeps saying, I know. The blonde is crying. She sits down at the table with Cassie and Lexi, which I thought I was really funny. <laughs> and then she says, I thought I'd remember this night forever. So ha- with like with them talking about <laughs> their parents reminiscing about high school, like I feel like, right? Wasn't it kind of like a full circle, like that yeah. girl saying, I thought I'd remember yes. this night forever. And Lexi says something like, you will, but not. 
what does she say? I don't remember. Something about basically you will, but it's not like a good one. Oh, it was yeah, <laughs> not like for a good you're reason. gonna it's gonna replay or something, <laughs> and but it's not like a good like memory, but like you're gonna remember this. I love I something love like I love her basically because it was like a S H I T show. Yeah. You know I mean? Oh yeah, it was, it was like, great, and Lexi's great. <laughs> um, so rules. Rue and Jules are at the train station, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and Rue's like, uh, "I didn't bring my medicine." Like she just she's starting to freak out. They'll worry about me. I yeah. Don't, I don't know. Thinks it's not a good idea. About. And then Rue just starts crying and Jules goes and Rue doesn't go. So then we flash like to Rue's life, the good and the bad and mm-hmm. all this stuff. And then that's when, and I did not notice this the first time around, she's wearing her father's hoodie, that wine yes. colored. And and they come into the light, so now you can see it's that hoodie. Yeah, I was like, yeah, Ooh. I know. And because it, I forgot. Um, Jules, when Jules is helping Rue get ready for the dance, she said, "Since when haven't you worn a hoodie?" Or like, how many times? It's something like that, right? About wearing mm-hmm. this hood, wearing a hoodie. And then what's interesting is I think her outfit for the dance was like the same color as the hoodie. I don't know if you noticed that, like mm-hmm. that color. Um, I feel like they're in, she's in maroon yeah, shades right? very frequently. A lot. Yes. yes. There's probably a reason for that too. I didn't look that up. Um, <laughs> she's sobbing. She's wa- I felt so bad for her. She's walking from the train station and then, of course, yeah. she snorts something. So she relapses. She starts singing and it like becomes a music video, which was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. That's really her. It's kind of like singing. a flash mob. Yeah. Ass- but it was really good. <laughs> I thought it was good. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not – Okay, so that was like the end. I forgot though. I do have the part with Cassie during the abortion. She's picturing herself skating. I think, by the way, I was confusing this with the last episode apart from the last episode. But the person who is skating, I looked her up, is Danielle Cal, K-A-H-L-E. And she skated as well in Ice Princess and Ice Dreams. Oh, I remember that movie. So Ice Princess, she did the stunts. Yeah. And Euphoria, she okay. did, this, did this, um, the stunts. But the, in Ice yeah. Dreams, she did play the part of Marilee. Someone's familiar about Ice Dreams. I might have seen a little. It's like a hockey player. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I must have seen that too. Anyway, I don't know how. So I just wanted to make that note in there because I didn't think it was Cassie. I guess Cassie of course. is at, in Sydney Sweeney, I think is pretty um, – athletic and she'll like try things but she's like no i can't i can't skate (laughs) yeah yeah okay that brings us to the end of season one to a close yes and we will do season two i will make diana do it (laughs) because i can't leave it hanging and then i'm looking forward to this break though yeah from the show i know everybody's like i binge it and it's okay and i'm like you I are very read. sensitive. I real, and I'm not saying this in a bad way. I, I, I think am. you do take things in emotionally. You you immerse, which is a good thing. You do really immerse yourself. I do think in the story, like even if you don't like it, I have a feeling you have trouble not, which isn't which isn't a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think that, mm-hmm. that you know, and things affect you, which that's what they want, though. You know, they want things to, people to feel it. Yeah. So. It's just you're not digging in. <laughs> yeah, it's how you're well, feeling. Yeah, everybody has, you're getting very emotional. Well, they have. Um, yeah, it's it's <laughs> this one was this is rough. Um, yeah, because I don't know. There's just you know if you look at like my recommendations that come up from other <laughs> platforms, we'll say yeah, they're very very different. And my husband watches very. You know, he'll get into like the dark or I'll call them. Yeah. I think they're like, I'll look yeah. over at what he's watching. I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't get into that. Yeah. He's probably it's very similar to Dave, except Matt doesn't fall asleep during his episodes. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, you know, listen, push me out of my comfort zone. It's all. Yeah. I'll, I appreciate I'm it. For, I'm, I'm here for it. I, I do appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fast forward and cover the screen when I have to. So there you go. That's it. All right. So uh, we will be doing Pretty Little Liars, which was released today. Of course, they released three episodes. We will not be able to do three, but we will definitely get one out there. And I'm excited for that. 
heard a lot of good things about it. Yeah, I'll get it out there. I've already heard th- mm-hmm. good things about it. Rotten Tomatoes just got the notification, 100%. That's big. Rotten Tomatoes is, is tough. Sweet. And it was tough on. It was, we'll things. have a lot of inside scoop, I'm sure. So, <laughs> yes, you're listening and you're going to be following that because it is filmed in our backyard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> if you happen Peace out. If you happen to follow one of us, probably me, no, on Instagram because of the podcast, let me know because I do get these random followers and I don't have any mutual people at all. And I'm like, is it the podcast or are you just trying to sell me something? You know, so if you do follow one of us, Mm. aka me, um, (laughs) the podcast. Yeah, I'm I'm Diana Lynn. (laughs) Diana Lynn eight nineteen. I've got eighty eight follower followers. I don't up from eighty seven. I mean, the last time we checked, whatever. I'm public now. I know, but I don't Didn't put help. myself out. Like I don't. <laughs> I know, but listen, some Yankees have been watching my stories because I've been <gasps> posting. I some love stories that, and I'm getting the Yankee check marks. That's awesome. That's because awesome. I'm posting like my wow. son playing baseball, and I'm tagging them in stories. Oh. Yeah, it's cool. So you should just tag yeah. them when you post about um, the um, but yeah. The podcast and see if they look at it. <laughs> they'll be like, I'll oh. be blocked. I will be permanently no, you... blocked. That will be the end of that. It's like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? We can't have homebodies. They're not going to come watch our games. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So email us yeah. at homebodiesonly at gmail.com if you want to chat about one of the shows or whatever. Don't try to get me to wire you money, though, because that's not going to happen. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Bye. No. 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 Bye. Bye.